Welcome! Thank you for watching my video on Health and Bible Time. Do you have a quiet place where you spend time with God? I am reading through my Bible, and as I read through Exodus, I always love reading God's amazing detail that He gave to make the tabernacle. And as God is describing all the details, in Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, God says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And I put over here on the side a sanctuary. It's a set-apart place. God said, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And if you continue reading in chapter 25, God goes on to describe the ark and the mercy seat. And then in verse 21, he says, And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee. And there, a specific place. And that's what I wrote over here. It's a specific place. So we had a set-apart place and a specific place. That was in Exodus chapter 25, and this is Exodus chapter 30, verse 6. He's talking about where to put the incense altar. And he says, And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. And then again, chapter 30, verse 36. He's talking about where to put the sweet incense. And he says, And thou shalt beat some of it very small, and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation, where I will meet with thee. So that was all in Exodus, as God's giving descriptions and details to build the tabernacle. This is Jesus talking in Matthew chapter 6. And Jesus give chapter 6, he's giving a lesson on prayer. And Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, Jesus says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And any of you moms that have young children are saying, Yeah, right, enter into my closet, and when I've shut the door, you can't shut the door when you have small children, can you? Stay with me. I don't want to lose you just yet. Just stay with me. We'll, we'll touch on that. But Jesus said, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. So we talked about there being a set-apart place and a specific place. And your closet, Jesus is describing a quiet place without interruption. Your closet. Just think about it's a quiet place. And this is one of my favorites. Psalms 91, verse 1. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So God says there is a secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. And I call this a safe place. Because it's in the shadow of the Almighty. That's pretty amazing. Now, I totally believe we can talk to God anywhere. He says to pray without ceasing. We can't stay in our closet all the time. But a quiet place to meet with God so He can speak to us. Like in 1 Kings chapter 19, when Elijah, when God was speaking to Elijah, and the Bible says that it, God was not in the wind. God was not in the earthquake. God was not in the fire. God could have spoke through the wind, the earthquake, or the fire, but God chose to speak in a still small voice. In this world full of busyness and things get chaotic, what if God wants to speak to you in a still small voice? There are times that we need to get alone with God. And if we do as Jesus did, 
we get away to get alone with God. There's a set apart place or a specific place, a quiet place that becomes our safe place where we're sheltered and protected by God. And those of you that have little children, God gave you those precious little children. They are priority, but you need to pray for them. Sometimes you need to wake up before them. I know that's hard. The moment that you have alone with God, cry out to him. Read your Bible. It's so necessary to survive. And your babies need prayer. Pray for them. Pray a hedge of protection about your babies. God worked on me a long time as he taught me the importance of prayer. My children were young when God started and I struggled and I'd work at it and I'd struggle and I'd work at it. But God never quit impressing on my mind how important it was to pray. And after many years, God has given me amazing time to spend with him. And sometimes that comes later. But right now, treasure moments with God. Jesus was our perfect example of everything in our lives, including prayer. Jesus knew the importance of prayer. This is Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And it's talking about Jesus. And it says, And in the morning... Rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And I wrote over here, a solitary place. It's alone with God. And I can't emphasize enough that I understand when you have small children because that's when God started teaching me. Don't ever give up. Don't ever say, I can't do it. Take any moment that you get. And truly, if you're sitting there with your children, talk to God. Read to them. Just take a quick moment and read a few verses. But talk to God. And if you can get into a solitary place, Jesus described it as a closet. Most of us don't have closet space like they did in uh, the movie but a solitary place, a quiet place where you can hear from God. I just want to encourage you in your prayer life. When God chooses to speak to us in a still small voice, we need to be able to hear him. Now, I cannot talk about prayer without emphasizing remembering who you are coming before. You are coming before your heavenly father who loves you, but he is the almighty creator, God, also. And I love Psalms chapter 100, verse 4. And it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. When we come before God, we're coming into his courts. And it says, come into his courts with praise. Come before God and thank him for something. Praise him for something. There is always something good. If you think about a relationship of a child with an earthly father, and the child is constantly saying, I need, I need, I need. And then you think about what if when the child comes to their father and says, hey, I'd like to spend some time with you. I miss my time with you. Can we hang out? Can we talk? And relate that to your heavenly father and how much he loves you and how much he wants to spend time with you. And remembering to picture him like Isaiah described, high and lifted up and sitting upon a throne. Yes, he is God, but he is also your heavenly father. Come before him, acknowledging who he is. Praise him for who he is. And then thank him for things that he has done. And share your heart with him. 
He may already know what's all inside your heart, but share it with him. Thank you so much for watching my video today. And I just want to encourage you in your prayer life and spending time with God. It is so necessary in our busy days. Spend time with God. Talk to him often. And I hope you'll watch another video. If you are watching on Facebook, there are no links at the end, but if you will click and go to YouTube and find Health and Bible Time, there are more videos, more videos to encourage your walk with God. So I hope you will subscribe to my channel and that you will watch more videos. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.